Hey, I'm Dave Avitaire from Animal Collective. I'm Noah, and I'm the Panda Bear. I'm Josh, and I'm Deacon. used to do like pop rock it's stuff. Kind of, kind of weird pop rock stuff though. Like Wasn't that weird? Like pretty quickly <laughs> you started doing a lot of like like unusual like well we just tried a lot of different ways of like I guess approaching pop but it was pretty simple it was just like a lot of like just like we just got like an 8 track cassette recorder and just we're doing like drums guitars like just you know just like standard pop songs but and I always felt that there was like a we all sort of we're all have always been doing music like on our own too because uh We've all always been, I, at least like since I started making music, I've always been into recording as well. So we've all sort of always had means of, of recording our own stuff and just have always made tapes and traded around to each other basically. And that's how we came to know each other and start playing together. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, hard to 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 cross the, the boundaries between complete. But at chaos. the same time, I think like the, the like the interest in trying to like like move past the boundaries of like that rigidity that you're saying was like pretty. I don't know. I feel like for all of us, it seemed like it was definitely like kind of instinctual to some degree. Like we just I like, wouldn't say it was hard. Yeah, we just like got. I think it was like a boredom, not boredom thing, but sort of boredom, just like wanting to like try something new. But like definitely, yeah. I mean, pop, I think pop music has definitely like always been there in a sense, like underlying everything. Like. We like writing songs, we like writing yeah. melodies, but I think we sort of like uh, got to a point where we were looking at it more from like a like sound taking up space sort of perspective where we're focusing more on how the sound occupied a room or how a recording occupied a room and what it did to an environment rather than like, oh, let's just, you know, this is just a song, this melody, and that's what it is. So it sort of was more interesting to just think of it as, as an environment or space we were creating and toying around with.
and sort of like anti-distortion yeah. in a way. I guess just because I love rock music and I love listening to it, but I've never really sort of had the urge to... I mean, we're actually, like, kind of, of big yeah. fans of a lot of music that uses a lot of distortion. I mean, like, we were just listening to, like, Much Nirvana earlier. Yeah. And, like, it's, like, just, like, yeah, this Burzum band. It's, like, this, like... Black like, metal. Black metal from... But, like, it's, yeah, I think, yeah, it's, like, never really appealed to... I think any time, like... It, I think sometimes even our clean sounds, like when we're playing live, start to become distorted, and I think it always just sort of like bumps us out a little bit. You know? I think it's a texture that seems to be used a lot, and we we're, we focus a lot on the texture aspect of our music, so I think we're always trying really hard to find new textures to use, and I think there's also an attitude. It seems like, not that, you know, like like I said, that I like it when other bands do it, but it doesn't really fit us too well. Our personalities. An attitude we really relate to. Yeah. So, so we sort of yeah, don't use distortion a lot. But it's not like overwhelming. Like it's not, you know, it's just sort of like a. It's, there's been like a, a shift from like kind of like, I guess, five, even like four years ago, three years ago, I think we felt very like do it yourself to a degree. I mean, I think we really had to like do a lot of the work ourselves. ourselves. And like when we put out our first couple records that we ever did, and you know, we set up all our own tours and stuff like that. And I guess like we're getting to a point now where we, we still do some of it. I mean, like we set up this tour, but there's definitely just like a little bit more assurance that like you know we can sort of like work things out if we need to and that there's people that are interested in trying to like help us whereas I think even like two and a half years ago it was like very like just totally on our own like it was a lot of fun but it was like no like safety net you know no like, not safety net I mean I don't think nobody provides a it safety just seems net. like there's a lot more people out willing to help us or like getting in touch with us to do stuff rather than us I feel like when bands at least in the US mostly start off it's there's a really like strong element of uh, we gotta like really do the best that we can to try and get this music heard because most of the time most people if nobody's ever heard of you they won't really care to check it out you know you really got to tour a lot and we and we did that and I think it's it's done really well for us luckily like it it helped out it's definitely hard to do and tiring but I mean we we, did, we got out there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> around a lot you know and I think there's a tendency to, to think that it means like uh, like really out there stuff or really abrasive or noise even or something like that all these terms like for us at least it means like the freedom to do whatever we want so I think bands should feel like they I feel like as long as you're always true to like what how how you want to make music and what's what's true to your personality then that, that's what it's all about for us that's what experimental music is you know what I mean we could do something that is very like uh, like easy to ingest or understandable but at the same time you know do something that that isn't but like as long as we feel like it's it's what we want to do then I, you know what I mean I feel like that's what that's what experimental music is just like having the freedom to do what you want with it and whether or not 
people really I I always tell like tell a story but this guy came up to me once and after a show and was like you know I, I teach at the university like across the way and I wanted to let you know like I know what experimental music is and I think what you're doing is like utter crap and I think you should just hand in the towel now because you're wasting people's money and I was just like yeah, thanks like have a good <laughs> night you know but I, you know like that's fine if you think that but that's that's not how we how we live or how we make music so. like I don't think we've ever like, <laughs> like took him outside and beat him to, what, <laughs> to whatever degree like ex- experimental like is something that we do I don't think it's ever been like difficult for the sake of being difficult I mean challenging for the sake of being challenging because we want people to like like listen to things in new ways but I don't think we've ever been like we just want to be like weird we just want to you know like I think that the, the the like the spectrum of music is very like sacred to all of us like not just you know people think like everything we listen to is like all like you know weird stuff but I mean we listen to like a lot of different music and it all influences us and I think it's not like yeah you know I mean it's there's there's like a, a broader spectrum of what we're looking at and it's not just to be like crazy it's like to to really like do things that are feel really good to us and are interesting to us you know so yeah. if change is part of that you know like that that's always like it also seems like for the past four years maybe that there's sort of been this like animal collective filter that it that everything goes through so even if we think like we're doing something like we'll, we'll play something like a year you know like maybe a year from now we'll be playing something we'll probably be like man like this is you know this is really super like pop, yeah, yeah super pop like, uh, it's like only to us and yeah like, like to oh, us <laughs> everybody <laughs> hears it they're like whoa like yeah that's <laughs> but so I, I think that's just this filter that sort of I think we'd say that the less concern you have for your stuff being palatable probably the better but I not would, for the sake of being like I mean difficult. if it is palatable that's fine but yeah just like don't worry about maybe we should tone it down because people would be more psyched about it or something like I mean I think like if there was like a like a I mean we've never ever talked about it in this way but if there was like a, a goal like in what we do it's to like have people like like open up to like how they hear things you know so I think it's like it's like to me at least it's always been like more of like wanting to try to like get people to like try something new you know I mean like that's I think what the shows are about is like or at least open up to the fact that this music's personal to us, like it's coming from a very personal place, so hoping people can relate to that side of it rather than being churned off by like an abrasive noise or something like that, like really being able to feel like it's something that we're dealing with that rather than just thinking, oh, it's just, that's just broken glass or but I wouldn't say we're trying to force anybody to like think no. anything. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, there's no... <laughs> Although that's faded a little bit. So we good. used to get it a lot more. We'll even tell people, like, you know, we'll even tell people that have interviewed us, you know, like, there, there isn't any improvisation. I mean, there is, but none of the songs that we write are improvised, you know what I mean? We, we write all the parts, like, and uh, we know all the changes. And then they'll go and write about us, and they'll be like, the mostly improvised animal collective. Like, and it's just like, what? Like, yeah, I, I mean, we, we definitely, like, rehearse everything down to, like, the... I think another big misconception with us is that we're these big, like, drug-induced freak, freakoids, which, yeah, in, on one side of things, <laughs> like, it, there is a truth to that. Like, There's we have, been an influence. Yeah, there, we have been in, informed by that sort of stuff, psychedelic drugs or whatever, but at the same time, like, none of our records have ever been recorded on psychedelic drugs, like, uh, we've never performed on psychedelic drugs, I don't know, it's, I don't know. I think that was sort of like a 
earlier part of our lives maybe and so we move beyond then it's yeah we definitely like, like always get like the LSD like references and all of like when people write about us and that's like I think it's understandable to a degree I think in terms of uh, <laughs> enjoying music or like making music or having people enjoy music there's a uh, there's been like every side of it to us and we would never want to like I guess it's it's the way we know saying we aren't trying to force like anything you know, we aren't trying to say like this is drug music, like this is music for so making you should drugs. Do drugs like, to we to it or we got into music, you. you know, because of <clears throat> being able to hear it in so many different ways and just the enjoyment of like you know its change in mood or like how it made us feel, and that's that's like what we're trying to do. We want to try and make music that's for as many people as possible, and I don't know, not we don't really think about it being drug music too much, but there definitely is that side of it. I know. I, we've been told people like to take drugs to our music, and that's that's cool. <laughs> they enjoy it. could get clumped together and, and sort of talked about as doing sort of the same thing and I think it's cool that a lot of people are doing like really personal things you know but at the same time there is stuff that other people would uh, would lump us together with that we'd be like eh, I don't you know what I mean I don't know about that that's that's sort of weird I mean it's not that I think it's I think it's good that people can see ties in a lot of things but at the same time I also think that's a person that's that's one person's personal take on on what sounds the same or, or what what you know one person thinks is similar to another so it, yeah, it's, it's good and bad I yeah, do think yeah. that there's like yeah it's like Dave's bringing up like the journalistic side which I think sometimes can be very like uh, jaded or like skewed perspective and not really making the connections that I think actually necessarily exist I mean they're close or like but I think that the that there's like a more like um overlaying like music and evolution or uh, movement and evolution like in music that I mean has been happening for you know thousands of years and I to me that's like wonderful I mean I think that to, to see like things happening um, I feel like just amongst our friends like seeing things just start to sort of like change and evolve and hearing new things and then all of a sudden you know I mean I just like that to me is like wonderful but I don't know if that's necessarily like you know I mean like we we were like I don't know there's all sorts of like ones like in, in and you know, like everyone's talking about, like 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 Time Out wrote about like like the the new folk scene in like New York and like lumped us in there. And it's like I don't know exactly what that means. Like I'm not sure. Like you know, like I, I get some idea of like where they're coming from, but like the, that that level of it is very weird. I think that's definitely very strange. And whether it's good or bad, I don't I don't know. I mean, it's it's hard to say. I think it's cut out of our control, so it's hard to. I think there's just a strong urge for writers or whatever to to do that sort of thing, and you can't really avoid it. But I think like the the actual like movement just in culture is like like essential I, like I, I think it's amazing that like there's always like new things and there's always people that are being inspired by something they've heard and doing something that surprises me that I've never heard before and you know there's just like always people like ready to push forward to something else you know and I, I mean I do think it's helpful if if it helps you reach a new audience you know if, if that's yeah. what like clumping together does when when you know like one band will, will draw attention and then and then it'll get you know what I mean I think anything like that is, is positive if it gets people like interested, actually interested in music. So, I mean, that's the best that can be said about that. I guess I don't know. <laughs> it's good. Man. I think it's. I think. I think the dangerous thing. I mean, I, I just have always like thought this when I've like watched like growing up, like as a, like a younger kid watching music. Like I feel like whenever I start to like get the sense that there's like you know a scene happening. And it's like written about all the time, and it's these people in this place. I think it's pro it seems to me like it's dangerous for those people to get stuck in that, and that they start feeling like there's an expectation to do that. And then I don't think it's necessarily like conscious, but I feel like sometimes people just like it, it becomes so like pushed on them. That that's what they do that it's hard to break away from that. And I think that can be negative because it like you know forces like it's, I think it's just really like important for anybody that's like doing music to or any art to really just try to really 
focus on what they feel is right and not get like, all right, well, I'm, I'm part of this like New York folk scene, so I got to keep doing this and make sure like Dave said it best once in an interview and he said the last thing we want to do is live up to people's expectations. <laughs> but I think it's like, that's not to say we want to like just, you know, I mean, right. like, <laughs> purposely try and disappoint people. We just sort of want to keep moving for our own, for our yeah. own taste or pleasure or benefit. 